Good Tuesday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to what's making news, let's take a quick look outside our weather window from this afternoon. And this is our cross camera looking the other direction. Normally we look down at the Wenatchee Valley. This one looking more at East Wenatchee and parts of Wenatchee and the Columbia River and lots of low clouds, a low cloud deck throughout the day today. And it was chilly. And as we make our way through the next five days, it's going to stay pretty winter-like, that's for sure. We do expect snow to develop tonight. That means snow overnight into Wednesday. In fact, we could see a rain-snow mix on Wednesday with warmer temperatures. Also warmer on Thursday, but that usually means wind. And we will see that Thursday. And then back to the light snow for both Friday and Saturday. And then as we get into next week, oh boy, yeah, we're talking high temperatures on Monday of only 20 with low temperatures in the single digits. And we will have much more weather for you coming up a little bit later on. And now a few of the stories we're following for you tonight. Moses Lake police say they've arrested a 21-year-old man for the brutal beating of a nine-week-old baby. The Chelan County Sheriff's Office said on Monday they experienced another example of how Washington's new police pursuit law, quote, ties the hands of law enforcement in Washington state. And Wenatchee police are looking for two men who can be seen on surveillance video breaking into a vehicle on Yale Street and stealing more than $3,000 worth of tools. But first, our top story tonight, a 23-year-old Arondo man was killed and two other people, including the Douglas County Auditor, were injured in a collision on the snowy roadway Monday morning on Highway 2 north of East Wenatchee. The Washington State Patrol said the 9.30, uh, 9.39 a.m. accident near Turtle Rock Road happened when the driver of a westbound 2001 Honda Accord lost control and spun into the oncoming lane where the vehicle was hit in the rear by a 2009 Ford Escape. Servando Martinez Tiburcio, a passenger in the Accord, was killed, and the driver, 39-year-old Carmelo Chavez Tolentino of Arondo, was transported to Central Washington Hospital with undisclosed injuries. Also taken to the hospital with undisclosed injuries was the driver of the escape, 68-year-old Douglas County Auditor Thad Duvall of East Wenatchee. Both Duvall and Tolentino were treated and released. Tolentino was cited for driving too fast for conditions and not having a valid driver's license. A 21-year-old Moses Lake man has been arrested after a nine-week-old baby had to be taken to a Spokane hospital with eight broken ribs, a collapsed lung, three leg fractures, as well as abrasions and bruising to the face and head. Moses Lake Police arrested Donovan Julio Cantu Saturday morning on charges of first-degree assault of a child. He is currently lodged in the Grant County Jail. The baby's mother said on the police department's Facebook page that her baby is expected to recover and she had seen no previous signs that Cantu was capable of such violence. In other news, the Chelan County Sheriff's Office said on Monday they experienced another example of how Washington's new police pursuit law, quote, ties the hands of all law enforcement in Washington state, unquote. Part of a package of law enforcement laws passed by the 2021 legislature, police now must witness a suspect leaving the scene of a crime in order to have probable cause to pursue their vehicle. The Chelan County Sheriff's Office said early Monday someone attempted to take two trailers from Sangster Motors in Wenatchee, but hitch locks caused the trailers to come off the receiver. A short time later, a deputy reported seeing the suspect vehicle traveling westbound on Highway 2. The deputy reported the vehicle failed to stop when he activated his lights and at one point did a U-turn in front of the deputy before continuing on west. The sheriff's office said under the new law, the deputy could not initiate a pursuit and the suspect escaped. Wenatchee police are looking for two men who can be seen on surveillance video breaking into a vehicle on Yale Street and stealing more than $3,000 worth of tools. The break-in happened November 26th, just after 8.30 p.m., 
Anyone with information on the suspects is asked to call the Rivercom non-emergency line at 509-663-9911. Coming up next, the districts where Chelan County Commissioners run for election will not change their shape after the 2020 census. Three former Wenatchee educators filed friend of court briefs in a lawsuit over the proposed capital gains tax. Chelan County Commissioner Kevin Overbay will step down from the board overseeing Rivercom. And we'll show you pictures of this year's Shop with a Cop program. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. At DA Davidson in Wenatchee, they believe your investment success begins with a personalized plan. A plan that is the roadmap you need to navigate your way to living your best years in retirement. D.A. Davidson can help you create a plan so you can take the time to enjoy the finer things in life. Let the financial advisors at D.A. Davidson help chart your retirement future today. I'm John Divis from Wenatchee Dental Arts, and I like to think myself as a comprehensive dentist. We are an office that treats people comprehensively for their dental problems. We do a lot of general dentistry in a broad sense. We don't send everything out, uh, things that we have the ability to do in the office. We like to keep in the office and under one roof and keep things as complication free as possible. You can come to one place and have all their dental needs taken care of. Traditional values and innovation in honoring the life of each family we serve is part of the ministry of Heritage Memorial Chapel. Our staff is committed to walk with your family with compassion through this time of grief. We are here to help and here to serve. The right kind of help when you need it most. Heritage Memorial Chapel. Welcome back. In another news, the districts where Chelan County commissioners run for election will not change their shape after the 2020 census. The 10-year population count found the county's numbers grew, but there was little change in the proportion of voters between the county's three districts. Chelan County Auditor Skip Moore briefed the county commissioners earlier today. We have left the lines as they were for the previous 10 years because the difference between the three <laughs> Um, commissioner districts was less than uh, 450 votes or voters, excuse me. So rather than uh, remove or move those lines around to reflect that, we left them as they were because they are well defined and very easily to define based upon streets in the city of Wenatchee. As also, we anticipate movement of population or and or growth population in the next 10 years that will balance these out even further. Basically, all three will be the same. The unchanged maps will remain on display through the auditor's office for the next week available for public comment. After that, commissioners will vote to adopt the unchanged districts through 2030. Well, more and more friend of the court briefs keep piling up in the lawsuit challenging Washington's new capital gains tax. Plaintiffs are suing in Douglas County Court saying the tax on sales of stocks and bonds over a quarter million dollars in value is an unconstitutional income tax. But its new revenues would go towards state education programs, so school advocates tend to support it. The latest brief was filed this week by Wenatchee Valley Education supporters, including former Teachers Union President Chris Cameron and former school board candidate Melissa Teagard. Uh, Judge Brian Huber is set to decide on whether the case can go forward on February 4th. Chelan County Commissioner Kevin Overbay will step down from the board overseeing Rivercom, the Chelan and Douglas County 911 dispatch system. The mayors of Wenatchee and East Wenatchee criticized the four-year commissioner for maintaining his seat as Rivercom board chair after the agency hired his daughter to become its finance manager back in October. 
Chelan County said Over Bay had no involvement in the hiring, but Wenatchee Mayor Frank Kuntz called it an ethics violation. In a press statement, Overbay said, quote, I wish to make it very clear that there was no wrongdoing when, my, when Rivercom hired my daughter, and I do not appreciate how this issue was dealt with. Chelan County Commissioner Tiffany Gearing will take over his Rivercom seat. Well, each year, law enforcement officers from throughout the region participate in the Shop with a Cop program to ensure children don't have a Christmas without gifts. Here are photos of some of those agencies out shopping with kids this month. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Please stay with us. What is home? A place to gather, a place to grow, provide shelter for the ones we love, eat, drink, restore, build trust. It's a place to rest when the work day is done. A place to find quiet after a night of good fun. What an honor we have at Guild to help own, finance, create, pave the way to live in home. A new novel is now available at Amazon.com. The title, Lost Treasure of the China Bar, details life on the Columbia River and Plateau during the 1800s. You ask, is the treasure still buried somewhere near Chelan? Find out by reading Lost Treasure of the China Bar. Lost Treasure of the China Bar. Buy it on Amazon.com. $12.99 for paperback, $2.99 for Kindle. A great gift. Bring the whole family up to Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house in historic downtown Chelan. Applewood smoked brisket, street style tacos, and our award winning barbecue rubs and sauces. Our meals pair perfectly with our exciting lineup of craft ales, made right here in Chelan. We've got room for big groups, or give us a call for catering. So grab the kids and check out the fun at Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house located in the heart of Chelan. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. In tonight's feature story, the Wenatchee Valley is on the watch for the Omicron variant of COVID-19. So far, the latest mutation of the coronavirus has not been detected in Chelan or Douglas County. Omicron has not yet overtaken Delta as the dominant strain, but Chelan Douglas Health District Director Luke Davies says the region needs to be on its guard. We know that it is more transmissible than the original SARS-CoV-2. Um, when we look at variants, we grade them on three different components. We look at uh, transmission rates, how much does it transfer between people, virulence, how sick do people get, and then immune escape. How is it escaping either vaccine or natural immunity um, gained from an infection? And so far, uh, we have confirmed that that first part of the transmission um, is significantly faster. Um, we identified it in Washington State about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, when we already have 172 sequenced cases, which means that it's much more um, at, in the state. There are much more Omicron cases in the state. We're seeing an increase in uh, overall cases in King County area and some of the larger urban areas. Um, Washington Department of Health and UW estimate it's doubling time at two to three days. Now, to put this in perspective, the wild type doubled every 10 to 14 days, so one and a half to two weeks. Delta doubled just about every week. This is doubling every two to three days. To put it in perspective, 
for 126,000, this could run through our entire population in about 30 days. Um, that's how fast this is. Now, there are the media keeps talking about how the Omicron appears to be less severe. That is based off of studies in South Africa. One thing to understand about the demographics in South Africa, as well as uh, many of the Southern African countries, is they tend to skew much younger, right? So they don't have large populations in that 50 plus area where um, they're gonna be seeing significant amount of transition, but that's just because of their demographics. Now, a better, more analogous uh, comparison would be like the UK or Norway where they have much older populations that are similar to ours. Um, and this would help us, us see what the real risk is in terms of virulence, meaning how severe it is, how many hospitalizations do we get and how many, how many deaths occur. Um, as well as immunity. Time now for a check of your North Central Washington weather forecast. Hope your Tuesday was a good one. Looking down at the Wenatchee Valley, you can see it was a cloudy one this afternoon. A lot of those low clouds out there, even some foggy conditions in some spots. But boy, a sheet of white all across the Wenatchee Valley, and we got more on the way. High temperature today. It was a weird temperature day today. That high temperature of 25 degrees happened at 155 this morning, and and we've dropped down to about 21 degrees at 455 and it stayed 21 all the way until about 2 o'clock this afternoon. We jumped up to 23, but 25 at 155, our official high temperature. 32 is where we should be for this time of year. 55, our record high, and that was set back in 1974. 21, there it is, our overnight low temperature. 24 is normal, and our record low was set back in 1983 at 6 degrees below zero. 9.2 inches of snow, and we're going to add to that total overnight. We'll get to that in a second. Sun Sunrise 745 and the sun set this afternoon at 413. As we get you into Wednesday, and by Wednesday, only three days before Christmas, it's going to be kind of a messy one out there tomorrow. The big news for tomorrow, warmer temperatures, 40 in Moses Lake and Afreda, 39 for Quincy, 36 down in Ellensburg, and for, uh, 38 for the Wenatchee area, 36 Leavenworth, and 38 the high temperature in Eniat. So boy, compared to today, that is a big warm up. So any precipitation we see could be a mix of rain and snow. Double shot of low pressure off the coast right now, and that's feeding a very wet flow into Washington State. We'll see a 70% chance of snow developing. That'll be about 10 o'clock tonight or so. By the time we wake up tomorrow, about one to two inches of snow. And here's our Wednesday morning. Another good chance for a rain-snow mix. Kind of a little break in the afternoon. That's when we'll get into the upper 30s for high temperatures. But then late in the day, towards Wednesday night, another wave of moisture moves our way and that will bring us some more rain and snow for Thursday. That's where the wind comes into play. Big, strong northwesterly flow and right in north central Washington, we will see some breezy conditions, partly cloudy skies and look at those temperatures for Thursday into the lower 40s. So if you only have an inch or two of snow on the ground, that could disappear. Christmas Eve, cloudy skies, a 50% chance that we'll see a rain snow mix on Christmas Eve. This is later in the evening, so Santa's going to have to be a little bit careful late in the night. Christmas Day also a 50% chance for snow, and we're going to cool down somewhat too as our flow comes down more from the north now with highs only in the mid-30s and even colder as we get into Sunday. Cloudy skies, a 40% chance of snow. Notice our airflow coming right down from the northwest upper 20s for high temperatures on Sunday and that's just the start of a very cold trend that we expect next week an 80 percent chance of snow on Monday much colder with high temperatures look at this cold air sliding down into the uh, upper teens to around 20 degrees for Monday. Let's take a look now at your seven day forecast. Tonight, much more mild overnight, 27 degrees. That's because we're headed to 38 tomorrow. Windy as we get into Thursday. Also a chance for rain, snow mix on Wednesday. Christmas Eve, cloudy skies, a 50% chance of a rain, snow mix. Still fairly mild out there at 37. And on Christmas Day, cloudy skies, a 50% chance for snow 
and we're all doing our best, aren't we, Malcolm? I think we are. 34 for a high, 28 the high on Sunday, a chance for snow, and look at those temperatures on Monday. Cloudy skies, an 80% chance for snow, 21 the high, and 9 degrees the overnight low. And that's a look at your local weather forecast. Coming up next, tonight's sports report with Eric Granstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. Campfire North Central Washington, serving youth ages 3 to 18. Register today in one of Campfire's programs. Club members meet regularly with volunteer leaders to learn responsibility, sharing, cooperation, and citizenship. When a child is involved in Campfire, they will be actively learning and engaged in activities, encouraged to learn new skills, feel a part of the group, learn to work in a team setting, participate in planning, goal setting, and making lasting memories. Are you a take charge kind of person? Consider a career as a health unit coordinator. You'll work to keep health facilities running efficiently by coordinating medical providers, patients, and departments. The Charter College Certificate in Health Unit Coordinator program can get you up to speed on basic patient care, health records management, health and safety procedures, and medical billing. And the 10-month online program includes a computer you keep. Get started at chartercollege.edu, where we work to get you to work. Happy holidays from your friends at Wenatchee Power Sports. Come in today and check out our inventory of Polaris snowmobiles, accessories, and apparel. We also carry a large selection of snow gear from FXR, Climb, BCA, and more. The entire Wenatchee Power Sports team is dedicated to keeping our inventory stocked as we continue to provide a level of customer service that's second to none. From dirt bikes and utility vehicles to snowmobiles and watercraft, we have you covered for every season. Your adventure. And now, it's a sports update on the NCW Live channel. And a happy Tuesday to you. The Wenatchee Wild head into the holiday break on a five-game winning streak after sweeping Merritt last weekend. We chatted with the interim radio voice of the Wild, Sean Zeers, earlier today on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. He says what is helping the Wild right now is the fact that they're finally healthy. It was the first time in a little while that they actually had 12 forwards dressed. And, and when you have less forwards dressed, it's going to tax you a little bit. You're going to get more ice time, and, and the players love that. But when you can get a complete game out of all 12 forwards and they're they're making you know crisp passes, they're, they're not taking as many penalties, you're going to get more opportunities to score. And that's where the speed came in on Thursday night. I mean, they're just skating circles around Merritt, basically. I mean, you, you, you couldn't help to notice how slow Merritt was and how quick Wenatchee was. And that, that basically was your, your game right there. It's just just how quick Wenatchee is. Now, one of those victories on Friday, 6-2 to two win for Wenatchee, completely insane. The Wild took 71 shots on goal. Zier says it's something he's never seen before. I've never called a game. Uh, I don't believe I've ever seen a game in person where there's been that many shots. And I kind of knew that after two periods of play, when they had 51 shots on goal, I thought, you know, they could maybe let up a little bit. Nah, why not? No, there's no way that's going to happen. I mean, th why would you? I mean, one, you don't tell a team, oh, don't shoot the puck. Well, of course you're going to shoot the puck if you have an op open opportunity. And they've had that throughout that entire game on Friday night. I mean, if, if, and, and really give credit to the merit goalie. I, I, I have to admit, uh, you know, facing that many shots and only giving up six, I, I mean, to me, that's not bad. It may look bad on the stat sheet that you gave up six goals, but really 71 shots and you stop 65 of them, not doing too bad. I mean, that's not a bad percentage. You can see the entire conversation with Sean on our website. Click the full episodes tab and then wake up with Angie Valley if you want to watch that. Wild off until next Thursday when they'll host the Prince George Spruce Kings at the Town Toyota Center to wrap up the year. Well, Gonzaga not only jumped from number four, from number five to number four in the latest men's college basketball poll Monday, but they also jumped all over northern Arizona. Chet Holmgren scored 20 points to lead the Zags to a 95-49 victory. Highlights courtesy of Gonzaga Athletics.
just not fair. Coming up tonight, Washington hosts Utah Valley at 6 o'clock. That's on the Pac-12 network. In women's college basketball on Monday, uh, Lady Huskies got a victory. Haley Van Dyke scored 20 points to lead the Washington over the Nevada 58-42. Nancy Mulkey also kicked in 10 points for the Dogs in the win. On the women's schedule for today, Gonzaga plays at Eastern Washington. That's coming up at 6 o'clock on ESPN+. Well, here's a look at the boys' basketball scoreboard from the Giza Winter Shootout on Monday. Brody Phillips had 21 points, but it wasn't enough for Eisenhower as the cadets fell to Meade 71-41. Kevin Flores led five players in double figures with 17 for Prosser as the Mustangs edged Eastmont 76-73. Uh, we did get the Moses Lake Wenatchee score. The final there was 58-49. The Chiefs winning their third straight. Coming up today, Moses Lake and Prosser at Wenatchee at 6. Eastmont takes on Ike at 7.30. Turning to the girls' side of the Giza Winter Shootout on our scoreboard, Pros uh, Prosser demolished Wenatchee. Yeah, that's right, 61-17. Ouch, Hanford got by Eastmont 68-44. Today, it's Kennewick at Wenatchee at 6. Wenatchee High will he, uh, that's at Wenatchee High School. Eastmont hosts Prosser also at 6 o'clock. Other girls scheduled for today traveling. Uh, Chelan at OMAC while Cashmere hosts Cascade. Brewster tips at Quincy at 6. That's the same start time for Cascade Christian at Pateras. Okanagan at Waterville. Waterville Mansfield, uh, that is, at Moses Lake Christian. Uh, meanwhile, on the boys' schedule, Bridgeport plays at Riverside Christian at 5. Cascade visits that game underway. Uh, Cascade visits Cashmere at 7.15, while OMAC visits uh, make that host Shalam. 7.30 games have Brewster at Quincy. Pateras hosts Cascade Christian. Okanagan visits Warden. Waterville Mansfield traveling to Moses Lake Christian. Well, Seattle and Los Angeles are still battling COVID among players as they prepare for this uh, meeting that's underway at SoFi Stadium. They had until 1 o'clock earlier today to see if any of the players could test negative for COVID. That means that they'll be without Tyler Lockett. DJ Reed, Brandon Schell, Kyle, uh, Kerry Hyder Jr., Brian Monet, Alex Collins, Travis Holm, all out. They couldn't pass the test. Seattle activated four players off the practice squad to try to help. Meanwhile, the Rams activated linebacker Lon Miller from the COVID reserve list today. LA will be without starting right tackle Rob Havenstein, tight end Tyler Higby, and safety Jordan Fuller. That game is on right now on Fox. Let's look at sports news. I'm Eric Grandstrom Grant. Back to you. Thank you very much, Eric. And now let's check in with Dan Koontz for a look at what's coming up tomorrow morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Dan? Thanks, Grant. Tomorrow is Wednesday. It's Winnie Wednesday here. On Wake Up Wenatchee Valley, I'll have wild tickets to give away more Wenatchee Wild Hockey tickets. Could be yours. Tune in tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. and again at 9 a.m. for all the details. Now you can win tickets to see Wenatchee Wild Hockey. And we'll have everything else that you need to get your Wednesday going creeping oh so close to Christmas Day. Get yourself in the Christmas spirit. Check it out. Wake up in Anchee Valley. We'll be with you tomorrow live at 7 a.m. right here from Studio 4. Grant, back to you. Dan, thank you. And that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for joining us and have a great night. Connect with us on Networked as we introduce you to the people and organizations who are leading innovation in the region. Get inspired, engaged, and networked right here on the NCW Life Channel.